Hey guys, Anthony Jones here again, and you are in my garage with the Top Gun John boat. And this is actually part two of my live well series um, for my 14 foot John boat that I'm doing a heavy, heavy modification on. Been working on it for a while now. Um, this video, if you missed the first video, go back and watch the first video. And, um, but this video is gonna really get into the nitty gritty details of the build. It's gonna show you how I done a lot of different trick things as far as making a custom spacer for the live oil pump out, doing some 3M carbon fiber vinyl overlay on my splash guard, actually outfitting and modifying the cooler into a chill mob box to uh, chill the water for recirculation back into the live well. Um, I'm going to show you the plumbing, how I did my setup there, and then a final installation of the live well as well as the live well in working order here in my garage, not on the water. But um, so stay tuned, check it out, like, subscribe, all of the above, give me some feedback, let me know what you think, and hopefully this will help some people. Got the hole drilled in the cooler for the bilge out for the live well. It's going to come out of here, it's going to route through here, um, through, and then down the hose to the uh, outside the boat. Um, I did drill this hole at an angle to fit the curvature of the hose. Now I got to just drill the hole in the uh, boat for the other end. I ended up having to cut this hole out, which is fine because it's going to be covered in decking. But um, I, I was real tight in there, and so I needed to be able to access this fitting. I had to cut a wedge fitting for the inside, and then I had to cut a wedge fitting for the outside, which I'll sand and paint to match the boat. Otherwise, um, otherwise that fitting, because of the degree of angle on my boat, it would have been sitting up, and I would have had to put it really, really low, probably below the water line, below that rib. So uh, that's what I had to do, and that took a lot of time. My hose routes underneath, around, and then through. And so that's where I'm at. Um, a lot of work to get this point. Okay, because um, my boat has that kind of an angle on it, um, that, that normally wouldn't be a problem. What you'd just do is mount your, your through hole like so. But um, that's killing me on my clearance. I really need it to be like this. So I had to come up with a spacer that I cut out of redwood, a one-inch hole, and just uh, figure out all the angles. I'm going to sand it and paint it, but that's going to allow me to lock my through hole for my bilge on my lava like so and um, get me to fit it inside of that bench, if that makes any sense. All sanded, ready for paint. I've got my through hole fitting for the live well install with that spacer on the inside um, with silicone tightened super super tight and then there's the spacer on the outside with uh, you actually use two different types of silicone here but I'm um, using some white and some black because I'm going to be painting it but that's how it turned out okay ran into a slight problem when I went to install this drain plug in the bottom of my cooler this is just a kayak drain plug i wanted a way to drain out the excess water when all the ice melts now this cooler is going to be used for a dual purpose for my chill mod on my live well as well as keeping drinks cold um, problem is when i cut the hole in the bottom and slid the plug in it's just real thin plastic there was a lot of give and um, it would not seal water tight so what i did was i cut this back side out um, inserted a piece of cedar um, drilled a three quarter inch diameter hole on the bottom and then a one inch with a four stern bit halfway through to allow more clearance for the plug to slide into place and lock in. This has stiffened it up a lot. Um, I should have a watertight seal. I'm going to let this glue sit up and dry, but um, a whole lot of glue and then some stainless steel screws on the inside with some glue to lock it into place. I should be good to go to drain this cooler. Got the Atwood Tsunami 500 for my live well. This is going to be my um, recirc pump it is installed silicone in place i've got the tube the bottom side installed i've got my drain plug installed i've got everything mocked up the way i need it to um install this in the boat permanently this is how i routed my wire for my um for the pump and this is the back side and note that's how i cut that um spacer that that nut to give me more clearance on that threading to get through the other plastic bin into the live oil to attach my screen so I'm going to go ahead and mount this in the boat. Cooler is in with the, uh, with the Atwood pump for recirc. This is how I'm routing the wiring for that pump. It's just going to go up against the foam, lock in behind the live well. Out of everything on this live well build, this is probably the most custom part that I've had to make. Um, when I tested the live well, my pump out, uh, it pumped 
pump a majority of the water out, but I still had a couple inches of water standing. So I'm going to use a, a drain system, but um, I have absolutely no clearance underneath my live well, like zero. So um, I'm really crunched for, for space. So this is kind of what I came up with. I took the kayak drain plug and then I cut about a half an inch off the bottom of it. Then I took this L fitting. I cut the threading off of it and epoxied it to the kayak plug. Then this went up and over, um, so I had to cut another uh, half an inch off this elbow and then epoxy it back to the original piece. So it's uh, three cuts and um, two glue points uh, just to give me the right clearance underneath my live wall so I could hook a hose to this and drain it to the back of the boat. I've got that custom kayak drain plug that I modified mounted in the bottom of the tub for the live well. All I did was drill a hole and um, mount the screws to the top side stainless screws sealed everything real good with marine grade silicone and that's how it looks on the bottom and uh, what it's what I'm gonna do is attach a hose to here and route that through um, the framing of the boat to the rear section so I could drain the live oil out to the back of the boat and out the back plug hole to the transom leak testing the drain plug and the live oil looks good no leak so far. It's been sitting a while. I'm about to dump it. I think we're good to go. Attached the hose to the bottom of the plug and the live well that I made. And um, it's not cut to fit, but what's going to happen is I'm about to lock this live well into place. That hose is going to go through this channel, under this back wall, through this channel, under that rib, and then I'm going to cut it off right there. That way, it's towards the back of the boat. And um, whenever I do my live well pump out, that little bit of excess water that it does not pump out, that's going to be in the bottom. Um, it could just drain out to the back of the boat and then drain out my plug hole. Just finished covering the uh, outside of this cooler in this uh, adhesive sealant 5200 by 3M. I'm about to drop the tub in. Everything's wired up. Insulation's in. I've leak tested the tub. I've leak tested the cooler. The, um, the pump is mounted permanently. So it is time to drop the live oil tub in and mount it permanently. Make these two together and this adhesive sealant will hopefully prevent any leaks and lock everything together for a permanent bond. Got the live oil tub all locked in and in place. Got my uh, aerator screen in place with the adhesive sealant drying and curing. Same thing here with the uh, recirc pump. Um, still got a couple little pieces of framing to put in place on that side. But um, right now I am putting in screws and using some more adhesive sealant around the top. So you can kind of see I haven't done that. But um, that's what I'm in the process of doing. And then I could uh, lock in the last couple pieces of framing on that side and then build my lips, my splash guard. Got that 800 Tsunami mounted through the transom back here. Um, all this required me to do was take a hole saw and drill a one inch hole through the transom very strategically Not a ton of room in there Got my uh, hose cut to fit feeds into here fills up the live well Mounted it got a little clamp mounted that into a rib for extra support. I'm missing one hose clamp I was one short. I have to run out and get one of those but um about to finalize the wiring of this thing, but uh the only other thing you have to do besides drill a hole and use a lot of that 3M sealant is uh, there's going to be some threading that sticks out. It's stuck out about this far. Um, they make it longer than shorter so you can cut the fit. You'll cut the threading off and leave yourself enough room to put that nut on the inside and then leave yourself enough room to uh, have some threading to put this screen on. I just tightened everything real good and um, made sure it had lots of sealant. It's curing. And I'm going to move on to wiring this thing up. Got the uh, 800 pump mounted wiring. Just want to show you how I did my wiring here. Goes around, cut some C channels, aluminum, goes back through there, works its way around the boat, underneath all this stuff, and then pops out here. Eventually it will be wired into a fuse box over there, and then gang switch panel here. It's been a couple days. The adhesive has cured. 
Um, for the most part, it's going to be a continuous process for that to cure 100%, but um, everything is super, super strong. You can see the screws I use, by the way, have a wider head on them. I figured that would be better um, for this application, just to grab that plastic better and put more pressure against the wood. Um, I went ahead and got a Shoreline Marine LED light um, wired up, installed, so I'll have light at night. Um, finished out my framing, installed that. Uh, you could you could see here how tight this cooler fits, how my framing just built down to the cooler. So it's going to be airtight in there. Um, all my plumbing is routed. Everything is um, tight and secure. And uh, now I just need to build the uh, lip or the splash guard um, around the top. Got all the uh, lip panels cut and in place. And... Uh, Everything fits real nice. I've got everything labeled, so um, when I pull it out and paint everything, hopefully I could um, put it back in the way that it needs to go. Um, it just uh, it just locks in underneath that metal. Um, I don't know if I could even get this thing out. Maybe I could get this one out. Yeah, it just, uh, just slides on top of that framing and under that lip, and what's going to happen is when I put it in for the final install, I'm going to glue it and screw it, but that is how it goes together, and also... Just to give you an idea, I know I've got the lights on, but there's the uh, Lavo light. Just tested that out. Um, but uh, everything is uh, coming coming along. Got my uh, all my pieces for my splash lip all painted, uh, painted up with the oil base paint. Did a couple coats. I'm actually going to be doing, um, now that they're painted, a wrap on these pieces. I've got a lot of carbon fiber accents throughout my boat, and I'm going to continue that on these parts with the 3M carbon fiber wrap I'm going to apply over this paint so um, paint will make it waterproof for sure um, wrap will just dress it up and make it look pretty got all the uh, lip pieces or splash guard pieces painted on both sides with a couple coats of uh, that great oil based paint honestly it looks pretty good I could just install it like this I'm going to step it up a notch um, I have done some carbon fiber trim you can see this uh, this panel with that glass window and then up here this access door forgive the mess up here this carbon fiber lip so that's just the 3M wrap it's amazing uh, how good that stuff looks these days actually did a little bit back here too but um so what I'm doing is I'm actually gonna wrap the lip in that same 3M vinyl to give it that carbon fiber look. So what I've done is, like I said, two coats of that oil based paint to waterproof this. Um, and now on the top side, I've lightly sanded it just to get some of that texture off of it and then uh, give this um, a better surface to grip to when I do this wrap. And um, really it's just an aesthetics thing. So um, it's just gonna look cool. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it. And that's what it'll look like when it's wrapped properly. Just take your time. With me, I like to roll all my lips. Rolled all the way around. This is the edge that's going to be seen. This is the edge that's going to butt up against the framing. But um, also, I did want to say that... Uh, this stuff looks cool, man. Um, I did want to say you want to use a squeegee. And get the real deal. Get the 3M because this stuff is is thick it's super super sticky it's easy to work with just make sure if you order it i ordered this on amazon another amazon plug but i will say that if you order this online just make sure you get the real deal because there's some cheap imitation stuff that is just not going to perform as well as this product so go ahead and spend the, the extra money and get the real deal working on installing the final trim pieces for the cooler section um these are just gonna kind of slide in and snap in and uh, I will screw and glue everything but uh, these are just trim pieces just to give it a finished look that's it so I'm gonna install these paint them mold it all in so final shot of uh, the cooler that I've uh, pretty much built in um, it's a built-in unit now it's fully molded in you can see how I skim coated everything in um, Bondo and sanded block sanded everything out it's gonna be pretty much seamless it is uh, ready for final paint just want to show you real quick how I'm attaching these carbon fiber wrap panels. Um, as you can see, everything is going in with the, some stainless steel screws. And what I'm doing here is I'm taking a uh, taking a small drill bit 
that's a little bit smaller than the diameter of these screws. And again, stainless steel, six by three and a quarter. And I'm drilling a pilot hole. I don't know if you can see that. I've measured everything out in increments of about four inches. And I'm drilling a pilot hole with a smaller bit. And I'm taking a little bit wider bit that's about the size of the screw head. And I'm coming in, I'm boring it out just a little bit. That way it gives my um, screw head a nice little spot to recess into and then sit flush. If you can see that, kind of how I did this over here. So um, pretty much anything in this boat, that's my trick to not having anything crack um, or split any wood, is to pre-drill your screw holes with a, with a drill bit as a pilot hole. And then if you want your uh, screw heads to sit flush into the wood, um, or in this case into the wrap panel, um, you just got to take a little bit bigger of a bit and accommodate for that screw head. But um, this part's going in and... And this bad boy is actually complete besides me doing the deck carpeting, um, doing the deck fabrication for this rear end. That's it, guys. It's all done. Thanks for watching. See how this thing turned out, man. That carbon fiber lip, 15 gallons. This adjusts. Got the kayak drain plug in the bottom. Got your fill over there, splash guard, carbon fiber lip. Got your pump in, the 800 GPH Tsunami, braided hose for the live well fill. Got your aerator screen on the rear of the boat. This thing's nasty. Can't wait to use it. Got your access. Got your flow right, aerator combo there, five foot of braided hose, 500 GPH Tsunami at wood. Custom kayak plug in the bottom of the cooler. Cool some drinks off, I'll let you know I tested it out, I fit nine can drinks in there. So it went from an 18 can to a nine can with all that uh, plumbing um, inserted in there. But uh, I'm cool with nine drinks, man. That's more than I need for a day on the water. I got that pump out spacer all sealed up and painted to match the boat came out nice man thank you guys follow me instagram a dub jones follow the build again instagram a dub jones youtube anthony jones any questions any concerns man i love this stuff hit me up i uh i can't wait to get this thing out on the water in the next few months i'm going to be doing an unveil video so stay tuned for that. Remember, you can build whatever you want, man. Don't let anybody tell you any different. When I started doing this John Boat project, um, people thought I was crazy. But man, this thing is going to be a beast. So stay tuned. I'm out. Thanks, guys.